G'day guys and girls and welcome to the Amateur Racer Podcast, a podcast by amateur racers for amateur racers. My name is Curtis Smith and I'm here with Lance Keach. Awesome weekend of MotoGP. Oh, amazing races all round, all categories. It was great to watch. What was your favourites? Overall, oh, Moto2 race was awesome to watch, those top five battling it out. Yep. Moto GP, the race for second. Yeah, great. there was so many passes and it was good to see Rossi get on the podium again. Yeah, he came from nowhere. Like, I didn't expect it at all, and he was battling hard. He had a strong weekend, too. Like, usually he's a Sunday man, but he was qualified well. All the practice sessions, he was really up there. He's like young Rossi. That's exactly what he said in an article. He's like, it's like a, I race like I'm young again. Yeah, which is <laughs> fair enough. He's, what, 40, 41? He just turned 40. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was 23 years since his first GP race. Yep, it was the anniversary this weekend. Oh, he's got, he was going hard. I wonder what they did to the bike for him. But he did really well. And one of the probably good things for him was his tie wear didn't really affect him towards the end. Yeah, he had a, he had a lot to go still. Like battling with Dovey at the end of the race. Yeah, and that last pass was awesome. He really kind of picked it when to do it. He had that superior corner to his speed. And you can see he kind of stayed behind Dovey. Yeah, there were some areas of the track where he was just so much faster yeah. than the Ducati. And, and then the back Ducati horse power. Yeah. But I suppose we can't say much because Mark has smoked everyone. Yeah, I don't even know what he did after the second lap because I didn't show him. No, and look, he was that far ahead. What, what's there to show? Yeah, he was just, he was just riding around awesome. having a practice session. And it, it was funny as afterwards in the interview, he said, yeah, I was just taking it easy, kind of finding my lines and rhythms. And it was like, really? You were like half a second every lap faster than everyone. I think he only did three or four laps that weren't 1 minute 39s. And then only Rins and Crutchlow were the only other riders to do a 139 at all. Oh, really? And that was probably because he was buttoning off at the end. He was like, oh, I've won. I'll just bring it home. Yeah, by, you didn't have to push. By half a minute. Uh, hey, yeah. probably going to be the same next round as Coda as well. Yeah, probably a bigger lead. Uh, uh, probably the biggest thing to come from the weekend bar or the good racing is Crutchlow's. Oh, that jumps up. That killed me. He was my pick. I was like, ah, like I you was were so last round. Happy. With, I was so happy. Like you were with Fabio. You're like, I was like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> it, was just, it was a rough It was up. literally the exact same, like, stalled it. But... This pissed me off. The fucker came back to like 12th. You got 13th. He, he, went, he was a long way behind last place after he did that ride through. Yeah. That like, must be a long pit lane. He was doing some angry laps. Yeah. Angry fast laps. But yeah, he got back, got in front of like Bag yeah, Nye. What a piece of shit. Real my tips. Got back in the points. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my favourite bits, probably the race, was the guys battling for a place uh, for fourth. Was it Miller, Petrucci, Morbidelli for a big period? I think Vinales yeah. got involved as well. And Rins. Yeah, and the Rins. They were just going for it. Yeah, they were just... Or even... Like, it, was, it was a battle for from second to fourth. Like, Rossi and Dobby were changing places, and the other guys were getting close. But, yeah, like, Miller, Petrucci... Morbidelli was being super aggressive. He, yeah. Him and Miller had a few coming togethers, and... I think he lost a bit of tire at the end, Morbidelli, like by yeah, duking out so hard. I think he was pushing hard the whole race rather mm. than waiting where the other guys, like he, Morbidelli was battling with guys that were conserving their tire. Yeah. So then he takes out Vinyala, so the Yamaha management won't be happy. Yeah, that was a weird crash. I, I watched it a couple of times and I still don't really know what happened. Yeah, I think he just lost the front. He came in. Oh, he like came hot. into the back of his bike, didn't yeah, he? he yeah, he. He was like the inside line really hot and then I think Vinales was like coming across at the same time. Like they and Vinales was just trying to pass someone else as well. It's like a super late lunge from way yeah, too it, far back. It was bad. Like he was definitely at fault. He did yeah. something wrong. He looked pretty injured. Like whether he was sorry for himself for fucking up so much or actually injured. He looked hurt, like the he didn't get up. They finished the race before he got up. Mm. So, I'm surprised, like, I think if it wasn't the second last lap, it would have been red flagged. Yeah. And then, it was good to see Vinales helped him up, though, because you'd be fucking pissed. Yeah, I saw an Some interview good with, there. with Vinales, and he said, like, it wasn't 
Morbidelli's. It was Morbid- Morbidelli's fault, but there was nothing in it. It was just a racing incident. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, it wasn't a crazy move. He just fucked up. Yeah. Kind of thing. And he raced like the whole race so clean and hard. And then to just make that mistake then. Yeah. Mm. Uh, who was terrible? Ian Oni. Oh, well, I don't know what he was doing. Looking in the mirror, getting maybe his <laughs> surgery again or something. But he was <laughs> Checking his jawline. Last place qualifier. And the stupid thing is, he was so fast on Friday. Yeah, and then they, like, how can they go that far off their setup? Yeah, they said they went in the wrong direction, which is, you know, you you lose your day, you go back to the settings you had. But apparently, Albeziano just basically said, we couldn't find what we had. Like, whether they did and Ian O'Neill was just in the wrong mental space, I don't know. But that was the first time he's ever qualified last for a GP race, I heard. Yeah, they were still changing, they were changing shocks midway through Q1. Yeah, because like pretty desperate times to. I think he was like, basically told him change it. Yeah, and he was insane. When is that ever going to work? It's like fifteen minutes. All right, first up, it's impressive to change a shock that fast. Yeah, they they got like got it. He got in shock entire change. And he got back out and got time laps. They That's... were just slower than the laps <laughs> he did earlier. <laughs> yeah, what a waste of time. <laughs> I want their mechanics though. Far out. Oh, the bikes must be super. Oh, Dale's GP one two five. It's like it's so easy to work on. Yeah. So, like, the bikes are designed to go fast and be worked on fast. Okay. One Having one of the quick-release things, the tyre things, would be cool. Yeah, the captive wheel... I hate the wheel spaces, getting them all in and getting the tyre. Yeah, tie, yeah that yes. sucks. Those captive wheel spaces they would look be, like... They look awesome. So, we better get on to the rookies, I suppose. Good result for me. Yeah, that was your best pick of the <laughs> round. <laughs> oh, Rins did all right. Oh, yeah, Rins... Rins... It'd be better than Crutchlow. Oh, Crutchlow was terrible. And Bagnaia was terrible. But you're lucky in that Crutchlow brought it back. Like, he brought it back big time for you. Yeah, to get back to 13. Especially those two crashes would have really helped. Yep. And then we had, um, yeah, Bagnaia was one behind him. Yeah, Bagnaia was kind of a bit of a nothing around. He's been so strong the last couple of rounds, but he wasn't really... Well, he was really strong in testing. Yeah. But he wasn't that good in Qatar, which I picked him as well. Hmm. So... But he had like a solid round. He was right, like he got, yeah, like he got it was points. Solid. Yeah. Second ever MotoGP race room points. You can't complain too much. Like. You're better than Anoni. And Mir was just nowhere as well, like from being so impressive. Yeah, that was like really out of character. Like it was, he's been really strong. Last round, he was like racing with the big boys, pushing people along. Mm. And then 18th. And maybe... Rins found something on Sunday, did a bit of a Rossi, but he just couldn't find it. Yeah. Because yeah, Rins's race performance was amazing. Get up from 16th to 6th. Yeah, in a GP race. And he was in third at one point, and he was mm. coming so fast that Ducati warned Dobby he was coming. Mm. Like, And he was like still he two was places take back. his points. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you said earlier that Miller said he made the wrong tyre choice. Yeah, so Miller does his usual weekly art- or roundly article on the Red Bull site, which are great. Roundly? Every every round. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll keep that, roundly. Um, this is a roundly podcast. And he said he was the only one in the top four or five <laughs> that had a medium front tyre instead mm. of a hard. Yeah, because Argentina is so rough on tyres. Yeah, he said it was only a couple laps in and he got a warning that his front tyre was overheating. It was like 91 degrees, which sounded cool to me, but... It must be, it's hot for them. It's mm. like it's way past the what he wants. So he then was conserving his tyres, which is why at the end of the race, he could attack Rins and Petrucci so easily. Yeah. Because he had just way more tyres than they did. Like Rins had to battle his whole way out the field where Miller kind of stayed where he was. Yeah, Rins would have been probably at the end of his tyres, you'd think. Yeah. I think it's one of his best dry weather performances, Miller. Yeah, he's got a lot better results this year and like even his seat fell off last time but that those first two laps he was battling yeah he was like up in the lead he hasn't really done that for he did like maybe his last fourth place was france last year mm. and the time before that was argentina last year yeah and then he had a good battle at phillip island but he's never like right up the front all the time but yeah. this year he is right up there yeah he was also talking about a big part of that would be the bike so being on yes, the gp19 he said it's such a big step forward from the 17 he was riding that it's like 
he now has the bike to fight evenly and mm. he doesn't have to be on the ragged edge yeah, at the same time as everyone else. Yeah. So it's just like, which is what Pro Morbidelli's doing as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Morbidelli was good this year. He was, I thought he was going to be the guy, the first VR46 guy to finish ahead. Oh, that, that, like, I can't believe it hasn't happened yet. But then Rossi just kept clawing forward, clawing forward, playing the game, you know, played it well. He, he rode a yeah. good race. Running he, two rounds in, but it's, it's got to happen. It's got to. Like, I don't think a DNF counts, though. No, it's no, got to be like... Beat him in a race. Yeah, beating him well when both finish. Yep. So, one of my rides of the round was um, Miguel Oliveira. Yeah, he did really well, like, right behind Paul Espargo. Espargo? Espargo? Yeah, that's yep. how you say it, Espargo. Yep. Asparagus. Asparagus. Is, is it P-E-S and then A-E-S? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, like, he was way ahead of Zarko. Happy Siren was the only person that beat Anoni. Um, he should be fucking ashamed of himself. Uh, Happy Siren, he was pretty good on Tech 3. The Tech 3 Yamaha. Yeah. And the KTMs, he's been fucking shit. Yeah, but yeah, Oliveira was flying. Mm. I mean, he didn't qualify great, but in the race he was good. Yeah. But he, he was pretty solid in some of the FP, you know, the free practice sessions. Like he was there or thereabouts at least, whereas... He's like, he's at the position you expect a rookie to be at. Mm. He's just getting sort of outclassed by Mia and Quattararo. But he's on a KTM. Like yeah, he doesn't have the bike. They're not there yet. Paul Spargo seems to be able to ride it because it suits his riding style, but everyone else struggles on it. Yeah, and I guess yeah, Mia's on a factory Suzuki and then Fabio's on a 2019 Suzuki. Mm. Oh, 2019 Yamaha. Yeah. So they're, yep. on, re- they're on really good bikes. So. Yeah. I guess... A big pick for me, well, not a pick, but a big point of interest is the crowd. You could hear them cheering. Like, I've yeah. never noted to hear that before. But like, when Rossi got into second on that last lap, you could just... It was, they love him down there. Yeah, there was this, half the grandstand was yellow. But it's like that, and then in Moto3, the same thing when the Argentinian rider got in front. It was just like a roar mm. you hear over the commentators. Yeah. Like, like, the atmosphere in those stands must be amazing. It'd be good to go to. It's mm. kind of one of those ones you wouldn't consider going to. Like it'd be a mission to get there, especially for us. But yeah, and if what I was, you got to fly to Buenos Aires, and then it's like four hours away from there. Yeah. So it's it's the middle of nowhere. I'd probably just go to Magello or something. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but the atmosphere sounded awesome. Even on my phone, I could hear him cheering. Yeah, it was it was great. At Moto Two, Curtis, we had Remy Gardner, Aussie, on nearly on the on the win. Second place. I was happy for him from like an Australian perspective. Not happy because you tipped him, didn't you? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he he looks good this year. He's really turned it around, and he's like he looks so good. The like the whole race was great. Like the top five were constantly changing places. Yeah, and they were swapping paint too. Yeah, they were rubbing. Everyone was on everyone else, and. But yeah, Remy Gardner is super strong. Like he was, I don't even know if he finished a race last year. That's he wasn't. Was, but yeah, he showed some signs of speed, but he was so inconsistent. Yeah, but this he year really he's was. like the bike's just coming to him, and he's absolutely flying. Like yeah, he, he has to be a championship contender for the year. He is. He looks really good, and the fact he can do it the whole race as well, not just for periods. And every every practice session, qualifying, he's mm. up there. He's one of the top guys. It was um a bit of a shame that Xavi Fierre's bike broke down the one lap, got the pole sitter. Oh, de- devastating! It went, it went for a bit and then it just died, didn't it? He said, "You see, he said he had no power, like no electrical power, like couldn't." He was trying to roll start the bike while he was still rolling yeah. along and had nothing. I saw him like whacking the bike, like yeah. you fucking piece of shit, like we would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but usually we forget to put fuel or something in. And- you know, yeah. How does that happen at that level? At that level, yeah. I don't know. And it's like, is it? I hope it's not a sign of the Triumph engines because they sound amazing. And they're giving awesome yeah. racing. I don't. I, that doesn't sound like an engine problem. 
Yeah, I don't know if the That's chassis do electrics or if Triumph do electrics or how they're set up. You would think they'd give them like a race loom. Yeah, the old six seven fives are pretty notorious for the charging systems dying though. So hopefully the oh the seven six five isn't the same. <laughs> do do they need a charging system? No, no, they're probably total loss. On yeah, the race bike. Yeah, hopefully it was a team thing. Well, not hopefully, not good either way, and not a engine kind of thing from Triumph. Yeah, his teammate. Um, I think Marcel Schroeder was his teammate, and he was up in the battle so as well. So like, he's been up there all year. If Chav, if Chavi, or we're gonna call him Chazzy. Ch- um, Jazzy. If Chazzy stayed up there, like that would have been another, like another person in that front battle. That, yeah. All right. His name, by the way, is X A V I. No one knows how to pronounce that. Come on. We just copy, we just try and copy the commentators. <laughs> yeah. So we're going <laughs> Chavy. Yeah. <laughs> um, KTM though, like so, last round, all K- Kalex top mm-hmm. ten. Yep. No, no one else in sight. This and then this round, KTM. Binda qualified six, and he was in that front pack for the battle. Yeah. We've like, made comment the last couple of weeks that, and even in testing that, it's just been Kalex. Yeah. With the odd speed up in like 12. But now the KTM's made a big step. They were um talking about, they went straight from Qatar to a test, and they had new swing arms. Yeah. Like nearly whole new chassis to try and find what they need to find to keep up. And they've done it like... They're throwing some... They want to win. They're throwing a bit of money at it. they got the Red Bull backing as well. Yep. They they want it. And Binder, like, he had some shiny points last year, but he wasn't up there cons- consistently like, like Martin was. No, he wasn't. Martin was awesome. Whereas Binder was... Wait, not Martin. Oliveira. Martin's Oli- three. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, wrong. Oliveira. Yeah. Oliveira was really consistent. Whereas Binder was... He showed, like, signs of it. But he was good this weekend. Yeah. So the racing, it was like the top. Marquez was good too. Marquez, he was surprising. Lowe's. Oh, uh, yeah, I was about to bring up your tip, Lowe's. I was waiting. Uh, I was waiting for that text. <laughs> I haven't been able to watch the races because I've been busy. Well, oh, I have watched them now. And then I watched it and Lance is just, yeah. <laughs> he made it known that Lowe's was shit. <laughs> I should have known better. Like, he's always been a disappointment. I, I said um, after round one, he's hanging out with Cal. He's on the Isle of Man. <laughs> oh, no. Cal's come good, though. Yeah. I think it was rough. But he's like mid-30s now. It took him a while. <laughs> yeah. I think it was rough as well, because they're like, well, it could be worse, but like a DNF where you did last place plus one, there mm. wasn't that many DNFs in that race. No. So that, there's a lot of finishes, which yeah. made it worse. Whereas... Yeah, I had a DNF, it was rough. It was I had a DNF a rough one. guitar for Bagnaya. Proper fisted. But it was like 18 points, but yours was 24 points. So that was, mm. that's rough. I wasn't too far behind considering. Oh, no. Like I was. I was. <laughs> it was bad. But his yeah. crash, we were watching it. It was a strange one. Yeah, like he, he lost. The, it looked like he lost the front, but then on the onboard facing backwards, he left a huge black skid mark. Mm. As, just as it happened. Definitely did. Like the rear was either locked up or spinning hard. Yeah. Maybe a bit of chatter, like the slipper clutches. That I presume they have a slipper clutch. Maybe the mm-hmm. electronics, but it was strange because you it just you would think it was a normal front end washout. And it was a long way into the corner. Like he was, it, he was like mid corner. Because Luthy crashed same corner, same lap, onto yep. breaks into the corner. Yes. So like, so your standard corner. But Lowe's wasn't far enough around the corner to be on the power yet. Mm. He was like the bit where you like between like he was maybe when he got off the brakes it to change the bike a little bit they lost it but yeah, yeah unsettled the bike he lent in that bit further maybe it was a you know what I can say fuck him <laughs> he's dead to me. I'm he's never tipping him again <laughs> never You're dead to me <laughs> yeah I'm gonna choose one of the fifty riders in Moto too uh, but um Baldessari that's two on the trot. Yeah, he's he's looking good this year. He was strong last year too, but he was like at the end of the race, his last few laps, the other guys had nothing for him. He just mm. went past them and just sort of played yeah. it off. Because Remy had that kind of gap for a while, but Bolasardi came, changed through, and I think Remy said he goes, "Oh, I probably did a bit of the wrong tactic. He should have known he was going to come up the inside." Yeah, he knocked him back a bit. Remy said he pot- potentially like got involved in fights that he shouldn't have. 
that then yeah. wore his tire out a bit quicker and yeah. But he just wanted to get in that podium, didn't he? he didn't yeah, he wanted well, to. Especially after missing out last round by two hundredths of a second. Yeah, it was stupidly like, close. Yeah, he made, he made sure there was no one on his tail on that last lap. Mm. He did. The last lap was really good. He put that bit of a gap from third. Just made sure. Yeah. Marquez was surprisingly good this week after not being really up there the last um, couple of rounds. Yeah, he wasn't great. I tipped him last round. He wasn't great. And then he didn't... He qualified like top six or something this time. Um, yeah, he was just a solid weekend and he yeah. was fighting for the podium. Yeah, like it could have been any of the five. Uh, like mm. Except for like Baldessari and Remy kind of cleared off. But the third place was... Yep open for anyone you know i'm actually thankful well not thankful i didn't tip lose no oh, it's the same corner that crashed on didn't it same corner same lap so i would have got minus you would have got the same points because we don't worry about what order they did oh in. yeah okay it's dnf's to dnf that's too hard for me to that's, work out that's pedantic isn't it yeah, yeah. i agree with that I'm like i didn't choose ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm over it i'm just glad i was I'm so close it. to picking mia i was like oh so yeah, close. he was. We both kind of made our choices and said we're not changing it. Yeah, you know we stuck to it, but we wanted to go Mia. And luckily we didn't, because they both did better than Mia. Yeah, Bagno wasn't much better. Still, it was like every it was like four positions, but just every bit counts. Yeah. All right, on the Moto Three, pretty insane race. Oh, there was like a twenty rider train. That were going it, it seven wide crazy. in the corners. Yeah. At the end of the back straight. And they were like swapping and changing. Yeah. It we was... just watched it before. And one mistake. Who who was the guy? Rodrigo. No, not Rodrigo. One guy. He was in the group. Got punted back. And you lose like nearly 10 positions. I think it was, it was uh, Massia. The guy that ended Masia. up winning. Massia. Yeah. And he won. He went from first to seventh in two corners. Yeah. And it was like... And I don't think he did anything wrong. It was just... It was just, just chopping like a... and changing. Yeah. You get slipstreamed, you get shut out of one corner, and you're back seven places. Yeah, but this, well, like you're in, you're in the front group. You're fighting for the lead, basically, and you don't get points. Yeah, that's just absolutely insane. Yeah. and it's not like the group spaced out. They're going four wide. What what was the amount you counted in the one corner? Seven wide. Seven wide. <laughs> how how was there not more crashes? Yeah, there was only a couple, and then. One of them was by himself. He's high-sided. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it was McPhee took out the other bloke. I can't remember his name. The other Grassini bike. bike but Yes. No, yeah. I, I can't think of his name, but it was a pretty blatant takeout. Yeah, and then Toba got caught up in that as well and then managed to catch back up to the lead group and beat some of those riders. Yeah. Awesome result. Yeah. We had, um, it's great to watch. Like It's insane. Binder. I don't know if it's, fir- if it's his first podium. Yes, first Aaron podium. Binder's, yeah, first podium. He started 20th. And he was in the lead as well. He was like... He said that he was gunning to take get into the first place in the last corner. Yeah. But he didn't quite make it. But like he was... They were battling so hard. Mm. He was so aggressive. He was the one... One of the riders. Him and Kinnett were really good at being... Leading into the back straight and not getting past. They were just... Oh, the, the duck and weaving yeah. and stuff like that. So, not someone that, it guess, looks crazy. It looks like someone's going to collide at any second. Super late on the brakes as well, maybe. Like, just that yeah. bit, bit more keen. I reckon Kinnett's going to win it this year. He is really strong in practice and qualifying on the weekend. He's just solid. He was really good in the race in terms of battling, but then he wasn't in the right position at the end of the race. Yes. And then uh, there's an, another moment where um the crowd went wild when Rodrigo, because he's Argentinian, got yes. into the lead about four laps to go and you could hear the crowd just scream it looked like he played it perfect too it yeah like really it, did that was a good position to get in the lead let a couple of people go past you but then you're in like third or fourth in the last lap yeah to slipstream it up but and he was he nearly did it until binder went under him and then R- rodrigo tried to slot in behind him and then just r- on drove, the very last lap drove into our uh, corner drove into rodrigo into binder's back wheel and i don't know how he stayed on that bike he's that was like usually a guaranteed crash. Your front tyre smashes into the, uh, someone's rear tyre, usually come off. It was, well, it's pretty much the same as Morbidelli into Vinales. Yeah. It must have hit flush, like just bounced off. Yeah. It was awesome to watch though. Oh, it was amazing. The race. crowd was going mental then, I heard as well. They're like, ah. Yeah. 
But they're yeah. just battling, just constantly changing. Mm. Didn't you say there was another, like, um, 20 behind that as well? Yeah, there was, like, two big groups. There was, like, group one, maybe, like, a 10-second gap, and then the rest of the riders were in a train as well. Mm. It's just, like... It's so competitive. It's insane. Like, MotoGP is stupidly competitive now. Yeah, but, yeah, to be, like, any of that Not 20... Not three. Nearly could have won the race. Yeah. I suppose we better talk about our tips for this yeah. round. So, Della Porter, another solid... He got seven. So, such a boring choice. Oh. <laughs> he was He's going always well. good. But he was like, he was more strategy at his race, I think. Like, he hung back at the back yeah. of the group and then like 10 laps to go he work his way forward. in the last couple laps, didn't he? Yeah, he kind of led at the wrong time. People got back in front of him and then... But um, how, how did Fanati go? Who? <laughs> <laughs> he was in the group. So there was hope. Yeah. Even Toba beat him. Yeah, Toba got knocked off and fucking beat him. Oh, it was, Fanati. He, it was great when Simon... A... Like, it was four laps to go and Simon Crafer went and found his team manager. Like, what's he doing? Like, is he struggling or is it a strategy? They're like, he's yeah. struggling. <laughs> and I died inside at that point. Oh. Oh. Fanati. I don't think he had a good weekend in general. Like, he didn't qualify well. No. We, well, we made our picks well before the weekend even started. No, no. It was like on Tuesday. That's part of the point. Yeah, yeah, it's just if you're gonna make your tips on like after qualifying, it's it's cheating. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not the same. It's, not, it's like we didn't choose Marquez or Dovi this round because we're like, well, Marquez is gonna win. He always he should have won last year by a yeah. mile, and he's gonna win next round. So we can't choose him next round either. No, and if none of us would have picked Rossi, because who would have thought he got second? Yeah, maybe we should start. Picking Rossi. <laughs> yeah. He's back. Championship the old fella. Oh. <laughs> I don't... Yeah. Let's no. not go there. Yeah, no. Let's not go there. I don't think so. No. Yeah. Next, next topic. So, each week we're doing a product review. Last week, Lance did the Speed Angle Apex. Is that right? Yep. This week, I'm going to do a set of stands. I bought a set of Torpedo 7 stands a while back. Torpedo 7 is basically an online company who sells oh, a variety of stuff from like snow gear, BMX gear, motocross, and road gear as well. So I bought these for $79 on sale for the pair, front and rear. Which is insanely cheap. In, in, that's why I got them, because I bought stuff from Torpedo 7 in the past. What are the tire changing spanners called? Tire levers? Tire levers, that's the ones. How do I not remember that? So I bought stuff like that from the past, and they were pretty good, you know, decent. Uh, so I got these stands because I needed some for the the uh, the old FRI, and got them. And honestly, seventy nine dollars, I would buy them every day of the week. You said you got your LaCorsa ones. Yeah, I recently bought a LaCorsa head stem stand, which is amazing for what it is. But it's one hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, so you're getting two stands here for. I got them seventy nine. I think before we checked, now one hundred and. Yeah, the normal price is 150 for the pair. Yeah, wouldn't pay 150. Which is like you can get pick up Oxford a pair of stands for about 120 usually. Yep. So these, uh, I had an Oxford, I have an Oxford, and a La Corsa, the older La Corsa, and it is exactly the same. Like it is the same stand. I reckon they are made in the same factory. Whereas the only difference is maybe, well, not maybe, definitely was I think this was like just a newer model, so it had better quality fastenings like the allen keys were didn't strip out and stuff like that and the wheels were a little bit bigger so it was easy to wheel around so i think it was better in that regard so if you wanted like budget stands and these are on sale get them yeah for 79 dollars, you can't really go past them yeah and you're how often do you use the front and rear stand rear stand i use pretty regularly at home but the front yeah, unless you've got a race bike and you're on and off warmers all the time. Or I, I, I usually store mine on the front stand as well, just because... Because race bike? It's an easy place to store the front stand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's there, mate, taking up space, and you're yeah. not going to use your bike for till the next track meet or something, or maintenance. Yeah, but in terms of a road bike, like you only use it if you're ma- if you're maintaining the front wheel. Yeah. Brakes. Brakes. Change. You want to take your wheel off to... Go get it changed because it's five bucks cheaper at the 
at the shop or something. I don't know. Rear stand I use a bit because doing chain lube, just adjusting your chain, it's Even really like easy. To wash your bike, it's easier. Yeah, just held up, nice upright position. You can spin the wheel around when you're washing it. But the thing is, like, I think a LaCorsa is like $79 for a rear stand at Team Moto. I think that that's, must yeah, be that. like the LaCorsa. LaCorsa must have a few bands. Yeah, they got the budget and the one you bought, which yeah, you so said the, is definitely a bit of a step up. The budget has like the... I think the main difference is that makes them better is the wheel. Yes. And the budget ones, and a lot of the Oxford have the same wheels, the Audi stands have the same wheels, and the Toyota 7 stands. Yep. Where they're about 30 millimeters wide plastic, about 60 millimeters around diameter. Yeah, they're, they're pretty small. So you get like, you get caught on stones and stuff quite easily, especially at places with pits like Lakeside where it's on gravel. Yeah, Whereas, or Morgan Park down the back or something. Yeah, the like course is like a big roller blade wheel. Mm. So it's quite thin and it's like 100 millimeters round, so it doesn't get caught on things as much. Yeah, if you can get LaCourses for a similar price, get them. Yeah, or I, I actually put, I went went on eBay and bought scooter wheels and bearings, the 10 millimeter axle, and put scooter wheels on my cheap stand to make them better. Damn, that's that's ingenious. It's great. How much did that cost? Uh, Fifteen dollars. Well, there you go. That is a good upgrade tip for anyone listening. Yeah. I've never thought of doing it. I only thought of it after I bought my LaCorsa stand. Ah, uh, you went, oh, hang on. Yeah, this wheel's amazing. Bit, this is way better. In in summary, pretty good. Uh, very good for $79. $150, no. Because the Oxford is exactly the same. They, I guarantee they made the same factory, just rebranded. For $120 Oxford, I'd get them $79 torpedo 7s every day. Yeah, definitely agree. That's an insane price. Yeah, it's, it's the price of a front or rear stand. Yeah, the only, only one I've seen cheaper is like, yeah, the Aldi ones. A month after they had their motorcycle gear sale, yeah, like thirty dollars. Yeah, and you got to like fight off the hordes to get in there. Yeah, and stuff doing that. Track days, amateur racing, shitty bikes, getting passed by fourteen year old. Subscribe, ta. Subscribe. We also have World Superbikes this weekend. Mm, Aragon. Pretty awesome track. I love the wall. Yeah, the whole track is... All the Spanish tracks are just awesome. Yeah. It's like in the desert too. It's like, it looks like the desert. Yeah, they, they, they ride so far away from the grandstands. Up around that, like around the side of a mountain, don't they? Yeah, it looks awesome on camera, that, that bit. I love yeah. it. So, I've been calling it... In the last few rounds that Ray's going to come back in Europe. Yeah, well, this will be the test. Davies was strong here last year. Mm. So that'll be a good benchmark of where where Davies is on the G- on the V4R. Yeah, he's one of his stronger circuits. It's a track Bautista still knows, though. It's it's a strange track, too. It's not, uh, it's not like the traditional European track, I suppose. It's a bit more open. Yeah. So... All right, we'll see how it goes. I think Batista's going to be really hard to beat. Like, after these last couple of rounds, he's looked so strong. Yeah, and, it, like, it's him. It's not the bike. Because Laverty and Davies aren't there. We've talked about this. Yeah. I'm on the fence still. It's obvious, like, he's going awesome. But the bike's amazing. But the bike is amazing, too. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll, look, we'll, we'll discuss that when it comes to it again. And it'll be like, also the Yamaha is going to be up there again. Like the, nearly the, the Yamaha nearly seems like the strongest bike because all the Yamahas are up there. Yeah. It must be really easy to ride, good handling, and they've got the power now too. Yeah. And it's guys like, melandry has got a big resume of wins, but Vandermark and Lowe's mm. aren't the biggest like winning streaks or anything for no. championships. What's, Vandermark's won, definitely won the one race. But maybe two now? It was two. Because he yeah. won that one, the first ever Dutch winner. And I think he won one after that. Yeah, I think... Or, or maybe... Did Lowe's get one race win and Vandermark won last year? Lowe's did win one. Yeah. Definitely won one. I remember. I reckon, no, is he the good Lowe's? Is he the good Lowe's? Is he better? Uh, maybe. Maybe? He, he finishes more races. Yeah. I think he's becoming the good Lowe's. Mm-hmm. Sam Lowe's won a Supersport World Championship. Did he? Yeah. Oh. That's how he got in the buddy. Into the Jeep, onto the Moto 2. Moto 2, in that. So he had one good year. Yeah. That fucking guy, though. 
<laughs> anyway, yeah. WSBK. No, it should be a great week. Oh, I love the three race format now as well. Like the two long races. Oh, you love it? Yeah, the two long... We get the, the 20 lap races or whatever. Mm. Long races. Where the, they, what are the, they calling it? Super pole race? That's the short race. The, the super, short race, The yeah. super pole, like 10 lap sprint. They don't have to worry about tyres. They just go for it. I do like the aspect where they yeah. just can thrash it and just go for it. So that sort of means like... So that like... So far at all the Super races, Ray's got in there and he's tried to disrupt Alvaro's pace and rhythm like early on, but Alvaro just fucked, this has just ridden away. But yeah. That's he, the the last round, he actually gave it a good crack though. Yeah, like it was three or four while. laps in and they were still battling mm. and Ray was pushing hard and then Bautista would just ride past him. Yeah. The, the straights were ridiculous how much faster it is. It is so fast. I want one. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely want one. Oh, I'll write it to work. How much are they though? They're capped at forty thousand euros. I think like sixty euros. What's a, a normal one cost? Like a just a straight V four, V thirty something. I think like thirty six or something. Thirty six oh, Australian. Gosh. No, I'm not paying that much for a bike. I can't justify that. The most expensive bike I've ever bought is my wife's, and it's nine thousand dollars. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So mine was twelve. So I still have to spend three times that, and then ruin it. And then <laughs> you use it and you sell it for fuck all. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I obviously don't have money. Yeah. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a concern. The resale value of the bike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 600s. Yeah, we'll have another Yamaha on top. Yamaha win to one of them. Cluzel was really good last round, which I like. I think I just like his name. Jules Cluzel. Yeah, Jules it has, Cluzel. It's very rhythmic. His um, showy Melodic. helmet you can, graphic you buy is pretty cool as well. So, Oh, I did see that one. Yeah. It is cool. Let's just make some predictions for the... We'll just do the big boy race. The big boy race? Oh. I don't know if he's actually going to do well, but I'd really like to see him do well. But Laverty. Laverty? Yeah. Is he going to be injured still? I don't, he's had I'm a few not, weeks off. I'm not sure. It was a big crash. Yeah, fucking oath. Um... Yeah, I just He's a he's a fun guy. Yeah. I like him. I'm I'm a sucker for a porn mo. <laughs> <laughs> and nineties leathers. Oh yeah. Fluoro. <laughs> they were awesome. Or just a child oh. that's attracted to shiny things. Yeah, oh look at that mo. Look at, that. <laughs> look at those leathers. <laughs> uh I'm a Ray man, I want him to win, but I reckon Batista's gonna win it. Yeah, I was avoiding like the Ray and like, Batista just because So it's like the Marquez pick. Yeah, I'm not going to pick either of them then. Let's go for a Lowe's win. Yeah, realistically, I think a Yamaha or Haslam. Yeah. Haslam yeah, might yeah. be good. He was good at Philip Island. Mm, I don't know if BSB goes to Aragon. Probably not. No, they don't. Yeah. I think they go to Portimao. Yeah, they go to Portimao in Portugal. Hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go to Lowe's for, to upset some... Ruffle some feathers. That's a, I think it's a solid pick. Like yeah. any of the Yamahas are good. Like you have probably more of a chance than any other brand yeah. of bike. Yeah. Outside mm-hmm. of the two top boys. Yep. Yep. So we'll see how they go. Uh, Anna Carrasco. Yes, yeah, so the, the first round of Super Sport 300 for the yes, year. Yes. One of the more insane. It's like Moto. If anyone hasn't watched it, it's like Moto 3. Yep. This is the one we talked about last time in our question as well. There's a lot of Aussies. Mm. There's a couple of Aussies racing in there. And if you're up there towards the end, you're a chance at the podium. Like, slipstream, get up there. One of the Aussie boys, hopefully they do well. Yep. Yeah. It'd be great. It'd be in- interesting with the new 400. It um It's taken the Australian Superbike Series a couple of goes. They've changed the rules now for future rounds, but yeah. to get the balance of what the restriction needs to be. Yep. Yeah, Super- we talked world's... about that last week that they just, they're a bit shit. Yeah, so they're allowed aftermarket suspension now, which they weren't previously. But in World Super Sport, they're restricted with a, with a intake restriction, like diameter size. So it's like a slight uh, power restriction. So, so it's going to be. Are their revs still the same? They're I allowed think their so. revs, but just intake restriction. Yeah, so it's just cutting down the power a little bit, but the bike, they're still allowed suspension and everything else. So the bike is still a race bike. Mm-hmm. Trying to limit the power to. And they're trying to match it to the KTM 390R. It's, ah, the, it's okay, the benchmark. Yeah. The, the 390? Yeah, so the 
Ninja 300 and the R3 can actually actually allow like quite a lot of engine modifications mm-hmm. to reach the power of the 390, and then they're limiting the the Ninja 400 to the 390 power. Yep. So that's should be interesting to see what the balance works. Yeah, it's a tricky one, but you'd think it won't be long till it's just just 400s. Yeah, like I think I think I've seen stuff from Yamaha about an R4. So yeah, that's the last one really. The 390 is basically a 400. Yeah, I think they should stop at four hundreds. It's getting a bit big after that for like a learner bike. Yeah, and it's so close to a six hundred. Like yeah, but the performance is significantly lower. A parallel, like a pretty detuned parallel twin, aren't they? Yeah, like they're made to be easy learner bikes. To yeah, it. thirty kind of horsepower. Yeah, and the bike like lightweight. It's got doesn't probably doesn't have great geometry. Mm. Compared to a Super Sport 600. Yeah, yeah. I will agree with that. They make mean, make for mean racing. Yeah, because there's no, like, it's like a Moto 3 race. They're yeah. just in Everyone there, just slipstream. Mm-hmm. You can't give up any momentum, so you just have to go for it. Yeah, they. that's why they probably go on the four wide, because it's like, fuck, I've just got to go for this. Because if, if I lose drive out of the corner, I'm not going to gain it up because I've got the same power. Even in qualifying, they just send it when they need to get past. If someone's like going to slightly hold them up, they just go for the pass from like way back. Yeah. It's great. But yeah, let's see. If- <laughs> just think if someone did that in WSBK or MotoGP, they would be so fucking pissed. Imagine like a Marquez or someone, they'd be like, what the like fuck? Like the rudest pass in qualifying. Yeah, just in qualifying. <laughs> I, I want a racer like that in there now. <laughs> just, just a Moto three racer on a Moto GP bike. Yeah, the G- I get the GP guys kind of play up, play up it. They're like, "Oh, he held me up, penalise him." Yeah, yeah, they yeah. they could try to play the rules, aren't they? Yeah. But uh, no, yeah, we got and a Caracas first Carrasco. We just had to check this. Carrasco, yes, not yep. Caracas. And a Carrasco first female world champion of a mo- any motorcycle races in world world yeah, racing world champion. Yep. So I've been saying we've got a daughter on the way. My daughter will be the second female world champion. Yep. That would be fucking awesome. An Aussie <laughs> female world champion. So we'll look out for about what, 15 years time? 15. 15, 16. I don't know how old. She's like, I think Anna is like 24. Yeah. Because the females are a bit slower to get up there than the boys. Yeah, because... but you never know when, it, when your one's out there. Yeah. She may be 17 just crushing it. Yeah. I... If she wins again, she'd have to go up to 600. I'm surprised she didn't go up to 600 this year. Yeah, another one of the other girls did. Yeah. Um, she didn't do great in the first race, but... It's a bit of a step up. Probably not in, like, competition, because the competition is insane in the 300s. But in that, it's a longer year. Like, it's yeah, every round, isn't it? Yeah, the Super Sport... No, uh, not every round the Super Bikes do. Mm-hmm. But it's, like, all but two or three. But the 300 do like less than half. Yeah. They kind of only do half of the European part of the season. Mm-hmm. It's probably where all the teams are. It's a bit easier. I think it's a big step financially. up. Financially. Yeah, financially. and But also the bike. like the, Those 600 World Super Sport bikes, they were doing the same times as, as the Australian Super Bikes at Phillip Island. Yeah. They, they are fast. They are fucking tuned. They must be like 150 horsepower plus 600. They, yeah. They would be on the limit. Let's think how much a 300 or 400 race bike could make. Maybe 50. Yeah, 50 rear wheel is probably like where it's at. Because I think they put out, the 400s put like 40 at the crank stop. Yeah, I think I've, I've seen a few Same like... 390s. I've seen a few of the ASPK like R3s and stuff get dynoed. Mm. And they make like, yeah, like 45 to 50 horsepower maybe. Yeah. So I add a few more The top world's of that. fought, make a bit more, but... It's not 140, 150 horsepower, though, is it? And, like, keep them screaming. The, like, they'd be brutal up top. Like, yeah. An R6, a standard R6 has a big top end. Yeah, just nothing. They're like a two-stroke. Yeah. No, it's a big step. And I don't know if... I don't think the 400 is going to close the gap type of thing. But... No, it probably should be the 400s. Just keep them the 400s, everyone. That's the max. Bring back the 400 Super Sports, the... Oh, they were awesome. The RF. The RFRs or... Awesome. Yeah, the ZXRs, the RFs, they sound wicked. Yeah, they are. Um... I love the sound of them. What was the last one? They mid-90s. Yeah, they're old now. Like, There's still some getting around, but 
fuck tuning one of those. Four carbies. Ugh. <sighs> and they're like tiny cylinders, so you'd be reliability wouldn't be great. They rev to the moon. Yeah. Sound like a hairdryer. <laughs> So, beer of the week this week is Wolf of the Willows IPA. Or Homage IPA. Homage. Homage. It says it's a paying homage to our love of American West Coast Indian Pale Ales. I like, it's just a really good beer. I've honestly never heard of them before I went to the bottle shop today. I went, is that local? Because beer of the week has to be local, right? Oh, we're we're all for local beers, really. Yeah, Australian. Not, this isn't... A Brisbane beer. Where is it? Cheltenham, Victoria. I have no idea where Cheltenham is. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm guessing Melbourne. Yeah, let's go to Melbourne probably. To me, this is a really easy drinking West Coast IPA. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's not like not over the top bitter or anything like a lot of them, but it's still not like nice and hoppy flavors. Mm, There's definitely not that bitterness there that a lot of West Coast IPAs get, and a lot of people don't really like that too. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of them usually, but this is great, and it's for how strong it is, like 1.7 drinks in a can. Yeah, 6, 6% was it? 6%. Like it doesn't taste boozy at all. Mm, 355 mil. That annoys me, should be 375, don't see why you can't do 375, whatever. <laughs> That's just me, the tight ass speaking. Well, when I buy something, I nearly <laughs> always look at how many drinks I'm getting. That's your drink, that, drinks that per is, dollar? Drinks per dollar is a huge <laughs> thing for me. That's why you're into the double and triple IPAs. Oh, man. I just bought... What did I buy the other day? Oh, let me think. Aether Annie IPA. Each can was like 2.4 standard drinks and Ooh. it was 22 bucks. Bargain. And it was amazing. How, how much were the wolf? These were actually I I got them specifically for the for the dollar value and the fact they were fresh, so they were canned at the end of January. So that's pretty from Victoria. That's pretty fresh. Now nineteen ninety nine, so twenty bucks for a four for a four pack. That's right. That's pretty good for like a local fresh beer, independent. Which I'm a big fan of independent stuff. I try to avoid Coles and Woolies beers. Pretty good value. Yeah, and I'm enjoying it. It's great beer. Yeah, so it's West Coast, but an easy drinking West Coast. Yeah, it's definitely a similar beer to last week, the Pirate Life Throwback IPA. Yeah, but this has got... Stronger alcohol. And it's just a bit more flavor. Definitely a bit more hoppy flavor, but not the bitterness. So I'm going to say this is a winner. Yeah. Pleasantly surprised. It's always a gamble when you're buying... Buying, like, buying from the label of the name, which I always do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. That is a cool name, and I love the photo on it. This looks really... It's pretty bland. Packaging. It looks bland. Like, we'll describe it and put a photo up, but it's, like, just... It's a silhouette of a wolf. There's a wolf. And it says IPA. And it says IPA. <laughs> and it says wolf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, the black half of the can... I just gave... The black half... The, the top half is black and the bottom is blue. That is it. Yeah. So it's plain, but it's a good beer. If you see it, grab it. Like, I've never heard of it. Definitely recommend getting it. Yeah, definitely agree. And we're on to um, Ask Tar for the week. So... Some more great questions from the guys. We've got a yeah. couple serious ones, and we've got a couple less serious ones. <laughs> yeah, let's call them less serious. <laughs> yeah. They, they're going to get answered. Yep. I don't care what people send forth. Unless we don't have time to answer them, we're going to answer them. Yep. So the first question's from Dale, one of our mates. He's our resident two-stroke aficionado. Yep, loves it. So he said, why are two-strokes so much better than diesel tractors? <laughs> 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 First up, are they? Well, <laughs> I do. His bike is great, and they're yeah, they're great. We've talked about before. They're so fast. What they are? Proper little. It's a race, like a proper race bike, isn't it? It's a GP one two five bike, like the yeah. World Championship race bike. Yeah, but weighs like twenty kilos and it's got like forty horsepower. Yeah, we are far too lazy to own them. 
Mm-hmm. He says that his diesel tractor is talking about my CBR 600. Ah, uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> I see what's going on here. Yeah. Okay. All right. I am a massive two-stroke fan. I've always owned two-stroke dirt bikes. That's the key, dirt bikes. I'm not going to get one for a race bike. No, I did, yeah, me either. It's just... I don't, I don't think they're any better. I like hanging... Sorry. I wouldn't own one. I don't know if I... Which, I guess for me, doesn't make them better. But I can appreciate his enthusiasm for yeah. Faffery. The, the, it's definitely Faffery. Like, checking your needle with humidity at the track. Fuck that. Yeah. Oh. But I will say... Probably the, some of the best racing ever was like late 80s, early 90s, two strokes. There's something about them. Oh, the 500s. The 500s, awesome. Even the 250s, they, they sound good. Yeah, like and then 500s, when they're... 500s, four cylinder 500 sounds awesome. When they're not like set up right, not tuned right, they've they got no power, so the guys are just dead in the water. Yeah, yeah. Whereas now, they've got like Moto, Moto 3, the GP. Like, the bikes work. Yes, there's very little yeah. DNFs or mechanicals. Yeah. So, are they better? Not anymore. Maybe if they released, like, a 700cc fuel-injected two-stroke. Like, the Suta. That'd be a monster. But... But awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, diesel tractors. I just... I didn't even know what you were saying until you <laughs> said it. I was like... Oh, I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. Next question is from James Walker. VX125. Great motorcycle or greatest motorcycle? So we, we had to Google what this was. <laughs> Knowing James, I'm presuming he means the Virago. But it could be a Vespa. Virago is <laughs> n- neither great nor the greatest. It Some, is... One of the worst. The worst. If you if you own a Virago or you ride a Virago, oh, you're, life's, you're life's, the worst. Life's too short to ride <laughs> shitty motorcycles. Yeah. Like, there's shitty fun motorcycles. Like, a Vespa VX125. Shitty? It's a scooter. Yeah, you could have some fun. If you you could to. have a fun. Like, that would be fun. Virago? Oh. <laughs> Lance hit the nail on the head. <laughs> right now we're on to a more serious question so we've got from Dwayne Anthony what's the best racing slash track training available in Australia well there's a few for one and we haven't done them all but we know a fair bit about a lot of them yeah so I have done two local coaching days which I think I got a lot out of that was at Morgan Park, right? Yeah, for, run by the Motorcycle Sportsman Club. And, mm-hmm. Or run by Advanced Rider Training, Dave Fuller from Perilla, Pirelli. Yeah. It is great. That We can safely say that is the best in Queensland. Like, if uh, you're a track rider. Yeah, so the obvious one and the one that's worldwide known is California Superbike School. Mm-hmm. But they're very stringent, so you, you have to do level one, level two, level three, level four in order. Yeah. It's quite expensive. But if you're starting out and you have the budget to go and do a five hundred dollar training day, it's probably, each time is five hundred dollars. Yeah, like each each level. If you're, it's probably a good thing to start out with instead of just going sending it around Lakeside and crashing into the wall, which is what I did. <laughs> um, I think that's the best way to learn, right? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. It's my bike is still ruined. I used to run to work. It's now dead in my driveway. Oh uh, well, um, look, you know, it was a bit rough to begin yeah, with. It was. But yeah, if you can go out there and go straight up, do like level one superbike school, or level one and two in a row, then like next year when they come back around, do three and four, like you're yeah. going to learn a lot and you're going to get a lot out of it and you probably can't beat it. Yeah. But, but we've heard other guys saying they've gone to it and said, I didn't really learn much though, right? Yeah. So if you're already quite a competent racer, track rider, going back to level one, it's like, it's a big, you're not really, unless you have some bad habits, which everyone has some bad habits, so you might get something yeah. out of some of Perfect practice, as they say. Yeah. And... But you're not going to get something out of every exercise you do for the day. No. So, And then it's also you're also putting groups of three riders per coach. Mm-hmm. So one of our friends was telling me when he did it, he got grouped up with two people that had never been on a track and were new beginner motorcycle riders in general. Mm-hmm. And he is a pretty fast racer. 
watch mid, this. Mid-pack. Which, like, the difference between a mid-pack racer to a... A mid-pack racer beginner. is a fast track day rider. And a beginner rider, like, shouldn't go near a track. No. So... Not, not racing. Yeah. At all. They, like, maybe... Not even red group. At, yeah. At... Exactly. Champions or something. Not even there. They shouldn't be near. Where he was not, like... Not saying that's bad or like paying them oh, out everyone, or Everyone has to start somewhere. So Yeah, like... But he was grouped with them and he's... He was a, like at the time like top of yellow yeah. group rider. Yeah. So he should really be going straight to three or four. Yeah. But he couldn't. So he meant... He didn't feel like he got... Didn't get anything out of the day. The coaches were t- with the other guys the whole time. Mm-hmm. So that, that's probably where I feel like I would be at. Whereas mm-hmm. sport, the Sporties coaching day gave me a lot of the same exercises. But then they, the coaches are there for more one-on-one time and can tailor mm. it to you. Yeah, and they also then like they'll you do the coaching day Thursday, they then tell you on or lead you on Friday as well the track day. Yeah, and you get more yeah. tips then, so you can work on the skills you'd learn the next day. Yeah, if you got a position, got a track day place as well, which is part of the mission for sporties. Yeah, never got any positions and they got the worst fucking website. Yes, about this year, but. Um, some of the other options we found are, so there's Moto DNA, which in Queensland is very much more of a road based. It's done on a small rider training track at Lakeside. Yeah, it's it's a really good like it's a good training. Is that the right? Good, it's a good training. Yeah, like good. It's <laughs> it it's a good like it's it's well done, but it's not for track people. No, like and it's probably a good stepping stone that if you're a road rider that's not super confident, go do that as a stepping stone to get to start before you're a track. Day. Yes. Yeah. Um, but in Sydney, they do proper track training, mm. probably similar to a sporties day or a superbike day. Yeah. And they at Sydney Motorsport Park, which is a like a GP style track. Yeah, it's fucking fast. Like yeah, a scary fast track. They break it down into levels and skills, and you get at the end of the day, you get certified from the trainer that this mm-hmm. is what you learn, this is what you can do, this is what we're going to work on next time. So you give you clear goals as well, which is really good. Yeah. So. You probably find some places like you'll go to the next training and go, What did I do last time? And they'll go through a lot of shit you've already done. Whereas they've got that those clear processes to say they they've already done this, they should this is what they're on to do next. Yeah. Which is good. And there's also we found stay upright, do um track training in Victoria, we found. Yeah, we're not sure which track because we, we looked it up. We wanna say Phillip Island could be but they get a couple of tracks there near yeah. Melbourne, so it could be like Broadfoot or something. Which is a great little track. But yeah, and it was quite expensive for the day. It was very. It's like five hundred bucks. Yeah, five hundred plus four ninety five, five hundred. A lot of money, really. And how much was the sporties? It's three hundred a day, and there's only twenty five riders total for like five coaches. Yeah, and then the coaches are Gary McCoy, champ, absolute yeah, can ride. Joe Salter is also a California Superbike School coach. Mm-hmm. So. Same coach you get yeah, from doing experience that. Experienced racer. Thing. Yeah. And he can set up a bike as well, like, very well. Yeah. Uh, Luke Cooper, who raced ASBK for a couple of seasons. Mm-hmm. And I got a lot out of the Joe and Luke last time I did one. It was just, like, tiny tips of, like, lift your eyes up, apex, or yeah. use, use your legs to chain size more. Like, just tiny little changes that really changed yeah. how the corner felt. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, really good experience. Uh, I know that in South Australia... They do very similar to motorcycle sportsmen's with like Levi Day and stuff like that. He was a very good rider. Yeah. So the, um, Dave Moss, he's like got awesome YouTube content and he's got his own website for content on how to set up a bike and tires and yeah, track suspension riding. guru. He came over and did coaching. He does coaching all over the US. Apparently, he's at racetracks like two hundred fifty days a year. Yeah. He came he knows and did his shit. Coaching with Levi as well mm. in January. I don't know if you agree, Lance, I'd recommend is the smaller style of track personalized experience over the bigger kind of company setup. Yeah, I think if it's, if you're a pretty competent track rider, go for the smaller personalized, get what you need out of the day. If you're a beginner, I would do California Superbike School. Yeah, so all, if, all moto DNA. Like, yeah, if I could go back in time and go do them, I, I probably would. But where I am now, I won't. Yeah. But I would say I wouldn't bother doing them. Not that I'm a very good rider. I just was... It wouldn't have benefited me at the time. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, next question for Ask Tar is from Lexi Gionko. What's the best tire pressure for track, soft or hard? So this is how long is a piece of string in a way, but we can answer it. Yeah, so we'll start with road tires. Yep. So generally a road tire, a good place to start is 30 PSI front and rear hot off the track. Yeah, so I used to ride on road tires and like my ZX10 and stuff, and I would set it to 30 cold, do my session, come back and check it, and then set it back to 30 again. Yeah, I did the same on my first handful of track days on my yeah. road tires. Like, you can go, like, one or two either way, but for, like, your Rossio 3 tires, your qualifiers tires like that, your sports tires, that seems to be about where they work on the track. Yeah, the only ones I've heard are different are the new Michelin R- RS. Mm. RS. Yep. Apparently, they are a bit crazy from what I've seen on Facebook. I haven't mm. used them personally. But, yeah, generally, and the guys that are usually running... Road tires are the more beginner end of the scale you generally. So like thirty thirty is a good place to start as a happy medium. Yeah, and you can you can look at your tire or even feel it. So at the end of the session you look at it and go, you can look at your wear. If it's extreme, you gotta go one way or the other. Yeah, you gotta sort of diagnose where you need to be and work yeah. it out. I guess the next step is then onto the racier tires. So you're onto your Slicks and treaded slicks pretty much, isn't it? Yeah, your super course cool, so SCs. Your Pirelli KRs, uh, Dunlop KRs, mm-hmm. um, uh, Metzler Race Tech, Metzler Connor. Race Tech, Bridgestone, Michelin Slicks. So these go into two groups. You have a soft carcass tire and a hard carcass tire. Mm-hmm. So soft carcass is your Pirelli and your Metzlers. Yep. So, yeah, they're, they're basically the same tire. Yeah. Good place to start is 32 to 34 hot front, 26 to 28 hot rear. Yep. Um, when you go to a Dunlop or a... Oh, Dunlops are weird. Michelin, which is a hard carcass tyre, you have to drop the pressure, especially in the rear. Yeah, the rear low. has to be really low. in compa- Not really low, but in comparison to Prelis. Yeah. So, my experience with Dunlops, I ran 20... I started at 23 or 24 in the rear hot. And then I ended up at 18 to mm. stop at cold tearing. Because it was yep. quite a cold day. Yep. So, so 22 the, to 18, de- depends on the conditions. Yeah, and you, they mean, also these all also depend on the track you ride at, the pace you ride at. Yeah. If Even, you're using slicks or trade slicks, you usually you're getting up there in pace. Yeah, and you want to be on warmers. Yeah. You don't have to be the fastest. It's like it's a good insurance nearly to be on yeah, a better tire. And they tire. just feel good. Like, yeah. Slicks feel awesome. They're a better profile. There's something about, like the first time I ran slicks, the first co- corner after being on warmers, you get your knee down. Yeah, that takes a long time to get used to. It's weird, but you're like, oh my god, it's like a revelation. Yeah. It's good. And that's not just the slicks, so that's like the super course rest seeds as well. Yeah. The yeah. Dunlop GPAs. And what's the tires? Bridgestone tyres? I can't remember, but they are supposed to be awesome as well. Yeah, the bridge, the VO2 slicks are supposed to be amazing. VO2s, that's them. Which they should be. They were probably the best MotoGP tyres. I think they were better than the Michelins. Yeah. But that was like, that's that's the past, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know what... The, I think they're a harder carcass. So There'll be a lower pressure. I honestly couldn't say. You'd have to look that up. Yeah, go... Yeah. Whatever tyre you have, if you're in that group, either talk to your like suspension guy or go... Research and see what the manufacturer yeah, recommends. Yeah, just Google it. Start where they recommend and then work up or down from there, trial and error, see what feels best. Mm. Another great place is just get on your local track group. Like ours is Brisbane Track Riders, but there, I'm sure there's ones for Sydney and Australia and stuff. And just put up posts like, what pressures do you guys recommend? And just use it as a baseline. Yeah, you want to go trial up and down from there to see. Like two PSI different changes the way the front feels under braking quite a lot. Yeah. Me. So... Yeah, definitely. And take your own tire gauge. Yeah, that's probably... pressure gauge. It's The important thing is to set it at what works with your gauge. Yes. Don't worry about if the number's different because your gauge might not be calibrated, but if you always set it to your gauge and you're always the same pressure, Mm -hmm. you know where you are. Because the ones they have the track, uh, I can guarantee they'll be wrong. Yeah, or a servo. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be like, and not just a little bit wrong, like 5 PSI. 
but it doesn't matter if your gauge reads 48 psi when the tire's actually at 30. It's if what you, works. If you want it at, that that pressure just keeps setting it as per your gauge, yeah. and you'll be fine. But if you buy like a even a twenty dollar gauge, it'll be pretty close. Yeah, like it'll be like within a couple psi. Yeah, with at least within a couple. Yeah. So just set your thirties for streets, and then what we said for the the uh, race tires, you should be right. Yep. Just yeah, good starting point. Hmm. The final question is from. We can either call him Cali sixty seven, or his name's Chris. Yeah, Chris so, Tongy. Tongy. You know him's Tongy. How do I get my knee down on my way to work? Very valid question. We all want to be there. Yeah. That's a pretty fun commute. <laughs> that would be an awesome commute. <laughs> I've got like... No, I, don't, I have no corners anymore. If the road was good up here, up the top of your hill... It'd be perfect. But it's like... It's all munched up from trucks. Yeah, it's a shit road. So how do you get your your knee down on the way to work? Mm. I can send it, mate. Just I can send it. Full send. <laughs> Roundabout. If you're really determined and you want to take some, because I'm presuming you're not wearing leathers to work, right? Just gaffer tape into your knees. Gaffer tape, yep. Gaffer tape some on the back on these slows. Yeah? There you <laughs> go, a little plug. Gaffer tape them to your knee and just hit some fucking roundabouts. Yeah, go past the outlaw. Yeah, love avoid the diesel spills. Oh, that that is not a good roundabout <laughs> before it. <laughs> it's where everyone goes to knee down. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, all the night races. Yeah, you know, because what better time to ride than at night time where you can't see fuck all. Yeah. Uh oh, I got a good place to get your knee down the curb. <laughs> Cut a <Yeah>. corner, <laughs> scrape the gutter. Don't have to get down as far. It's, well, commi- it's commitment to run, run that line. <laughs> it, it's commitment. All right. It's kind of like the uh, bus stop exit. <laughs> you, you, you're going to dig into something, whether it's Richmond or the dirt, something's going to happen. What was the photo you, you showed me before? Oh, someone shared it on our Facebook page as well, but someone getting a knee down when they're basically upright. That That's is the winning tactic. Knee down is life. doesn't matter if you're going fast <laughs> or you're going straight. <laughs> I've actually saw, like, a guy in front of me. I think he was on, like, an R6. I'm on the way to work at, like, 5 in the morning. And there's this guy hanging off his bike on, like, the main street, Kelvin Grove Road. Hanging off at every corner, but doing, like, 60. Which is it's hard to do, because it's, like, hard work to stay on the bike or it's, hanging off that much. There's no gyro effect, like, yeah. holding him in that position. It looks so awkward. I passed him doing like 80, like, straight. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is this guy doing? So, he could be that guy. That's another option. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Well, thanks to the questions anyway. It's probably the funnest part to do for us. So I, I think it's fun. Especially with the with diesel tractors and Vespers. <laughs> diesel tractors. That's actually clever. Don't buy a Virago. It's not the greatest... <laughs> All great. It never was. I think it's barely a motorcycle. No, it's no good. It's just no good. The only good thing about a cruiser is like the huge engine. And then you buy a 125 or a 250. <laughs> yeah. It just cancels it out. <laughs> it's just lame. They look shit. They go shit. They sound shit. Don't turn. Don't stop. I'm sure they're comfortable. Yeah, oh, look, they'd be, of course they'd be coming. There's only anything I wouldn't going for them. spend that much time on it anyway. No amateur racer rides a Virago. Yeah. Does that one bloke that takes his Harley out of the track down here. <laughs> oh, yes, and it blows up every time he goes. Yeah. He got punted. It was a sporty, wasn't it? He was giving it some. Yeah, he posted a, pit, a video on his Facebook page for his business overtaking me onto the straight. <laughs> <laughs> on the um, it was on the really? warm. It was on the warm up, like we're not allowed to pass. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fuck him then. Yeah, he does know the rules. <laughs> well, that's it for us this week, guys. Yeah, thanks for listening. Got some exciting news for next week, don't we, Lance? Yes, we got Mad Mike Jones coming in for an interview. Yes, so we'll definitely post it as soon as it's up. And we'll let you know how it goes. It should be interesting. Probably. We'll have some run-of-the-mill questions, you know. It's just not run-of-the-mill, but, like, interesting informing questions, but also some amateur racer questions. Yeah. 
But yeah, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on yep. however you listen to us. Uh, and I'm not sure if we've said, but we're also on Spotify now. So that's all up and running perfectly. Same as iTunes and SoundCloud. SoundCloud is actually really good in that it's just a free app and it works perfectly. It's not like YouTube where if you you know shut down your phone screen, it stops working. Oh, so it continues playing. It continues playing. Yeah. So it's it's decent. If you want a free one, because you've got to pay for... We well, don't have to pay for all Spotify, I don't think. We get ads. But you get ads. So if you, don't, if you want a free alternative, that's probably the best. Unless you just want to listen to YouTube with it open or something like that. But yeah, thanks for listening.